Western Ghat again it is present in the western part of the country. It is a narrow strip that you can see in the map. This the pink color one is the western Ghat found on the western part of the country. It spreads across six states. So beginning with Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, then Goa, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. It spreads across six states. This region extends from the south of the river Tapi in the north up to the Kanyakumar. It is one of the biodiversity hot spots. That means biodiversity found here or the species of plants and animals found here can be seen nowhere else on the earth. There is high endemism in this region. Western Ghats is located at 2700 meters above the sea level. Vegetation here is mostly of moist evergreen forests. We have discussed what are evergreen forests before. So one might find trees like Jamun, then Terminalia in this region. It is very rich in uh, plant species, about 4,000 species of plants are found in the Western Ghats, which is about 27% of the total plant species present in India. The region receives heavy rainfall. It is more than 200 centimeters. In some regions, the rainfall may be about 500 centimeters. So it receives very heavy rainfall. Now in the southern part of Western Ghats, forests have been cleared for tea, coffee, rubber, cardamom plantations. You must be aware that uh, the southern part of the country is well known for these crops tea, coffee, rubber, and cardamom. Then, at an altitude of 1800 meters uh, in Palni, Annamalai, and Nilgiri hills, one find shola grasslands. We have discussed this before also, what is the meaning of shola grasslands uh, and the animal that is the Nilgiri Tahar is found in these shola grasslands of southern India. So sholas are present in the southern part of the western Ghats. Some of the major river systems, the, that is Kaveri, then Godavari and Krishna are some of the major rivers originating in Western Ghats. In the northern part, one might find river Godavari, then 
Krishna and then Kaveri. Now this is home to many endangered plants and animals because the region has high endemism. The animals found here, okay, it includes Nilgiri Langur. Nilgiri Langur is a black colored Langur, you can see here. This is the Nilgiri Langur. This is black colored one and the head region has a golden brown fur. These are hunted for their skin and they are vulnerable under IOCN status. The next animal found here is lion-tailed macaque. Lion-tailed macaque is endangered species in the Western Ghat. Its tail is long and thin but at the end you can see here a tuft is present uh, therefore the name is lion tail maka one might also find find rodents like a spiny dormouse spiny dormouse is a rodent which is restricted to dense vegetation uh, in the western ghats and this rodent is arboreal, that means it prefers to live on the tree holes, live in tree holes. Spiny dormouse is again an endemic species. And the rodent feeds on fruits. It is a nocturnal animal, that means it is active during night. Then grizzled giant squirrel. This image here is of the grizzled giant squirrel. It is a near threatened species present in Western Ghat. Again this is a tree squirrel. It is widely found in the Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary, that is the southern part of the Western Ghats. Then other animals like Mal Malabar civet, rusty giant squirrel, and one also finds four species of hornbills. You can see this bird on the left side. It is known as hornbill. So there are four species of hornbills found in the Western Ghats. Malabar grey hornbill, Malabar piled hornbill, Indian grey hornbill and great Indian hornbill. Hornbills are giant birds. You can look at the size here. Okay. They live in the holes, big holes made in the large trees and tall trees. They are very important part of the forest ecosystem. Because they help in dispersal of seeds of forest plants. They usually feed on the fruits of these plants and they help in the dispersal of seeds. Then another animal which is found here is the Asiatic wild dog or dole. You can see here, this is the image of dole. The 
that uh, apart from these animals, one also finds leopards, the gore or the bison in western parts. Then the next biogeographic zone is Northeast India. It is also one of the biodiversity hotspots. That means it will have species of plants and animals nowhere else found on the earth. They are restricted to this region only. It is high uh, in endemic species. Okay, so it is richest of all zones in terms of species, composition and also endemism. You understand endemism? That is, um, the species are restricted to this area only or they can be found in this area only. This biogeographic zone spans across the states of northeastern states of Assam, then Manipur, Meghalaya, Nagaland, and Tripura. You can see here this green uh, shaded part. This is the northeast biogeographic zone. So this zone is transition between Indian, Indo-Malayan, and Indo-Chinese region. Kasi Jayantia Hills, uh, they are hills present in Meghalaya and they have one of the richest biodiversity in Asia. Then uh, you must have heard in Nagaland a uh, Hornbill music festival is celebrated. So Hornbills in, Nagal uh, so, uh, Hornbills in Nagaland, they have close ties with the tribals. And one might find the, yes, this species that is Rufus necked Hornbill. It is a vulnerable species found in the northeastern region or northeastern biogeographic region. You can see uh, the neck of the male, okay, it is red colored, red colored, and the female is completely black. So, this species of hornbill that is rufous necked is found in the northeastern part of the country. Again, there are threats to this species uh, mostly hunting and their habitat destruction. Okay, they prefer to live, live on uh, large trees. So, if trees are cut, then their habitats are destroyed. Then one might find, one also finds one horned rhinoceros. Okay, in the Kaziranga National Park, in Assam is famous for one horned rhinoceros, the greater one horned rhinoceros, Indian rhino. Again, it is a vulnerable species because it is found in the northeast and few regions of West Bengal, northern part of the West Bengal. So, this is a unique species which is seen. One horned rhinoceros, it prefers to live in grasslands. Skin is thick grey in colour and due to presence of one horn on the head region, a single horn on the head region, the common name is one greater one horned rhinoceros. Then One also finds elephants in this region, an animal known as pygmy hog. Then there are several migratory birds 
which migrate every year to this region from Siberia. Okay. So this bird over here on the left side is Amur falcon. It is a small sized raptor. Raptors are the birds of prey. Okay. It's a small sized raptor. It breeds in Siberia, but it migrates to South Africa. And on its migration route, it, it is found in the Northeast India, or it stops in the Northeast India. Now, these birds, they migrate in large flocks. Okay, so this migration is therefore very notable. Large flocks of these birds come to the northeast part of the country. And they cover one of the longest migration routes to reach South Africa. And this bird feeds on insects. So we have discussed about the fauna of the region. The flora or the vegetation mostly comprises of evergreen forest, semi-evergreen forest, deciduous forest, and grasslands that are found. So let us now revise the two biogeographic zones that we have studied recently. Western Ghats, you can see here it is a narrow strip on the western part of the country. It spreads across six states, okay, beginning from Gujarat, then Maharashtra, Karnataka, Goa, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. It is one of the biodiversity hotspot. Biodiversity hotspot means the area is rich in um, the species composition and they are highly endemic. That means the species are found only in this region in the world. Then river systems like Kaveri and Krishna, they find uh, their origin in the western ghats. Vegetation here is mostly of moist evergreen forest. So one finds trees like Jammu, Terminalia in these forests. The fauna here is of comprise, comprises of Nilgiri Langu. Nilgiri Langur, you have seen the image. It is a black colored langur with a golden fur on its head. It is hunted for its skin. And therefore, it is vulnerable under IUCN status. Then the lion tail akak. This animal. The tail is long and thin, and at the tip of the tail, one finds a tuft of hair. So, this is known as, therefore, it is known as lion tailed macaque. It is an endangered species found in the Western Ghats. Then, one finds the grizzled giant squirrel. It is a tree squirrel, and it is near threatened found in the Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary of the Western Ghats. Then we discussed about spiny dormouse, uh, which is an arbo arboreal rodent. It is again restricted to Western Ghats, or it is endemic to Western Ghats. Then we have discussed about the hornbills, that four species of hornbills are found in the Western Ghats. 
மலாபார் பயோடைவர்சிட்டி ஹாட்ஸ்பாட்ஸ் it spans across the states of assam manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland and tripura varied vegetation is present in this region so one has one has evergreen uh, one can find evergreen forest semi evergreen forest deciduous forest and grasslands there one species of hornbill is present in this region which is not threatened sorry it is vulnerable known as rufous necked hornbill and you can see here the male has red color head therefore it is known as rufous necked hornbill female is completely black and in nagaland the hornbills are closely associated with the tribal people so there is also a hornbill music festival then rhinoceros greater one horn rhinoceros or the indian rhino grey colored animal the first to live in the grassland it is found in the state of assam kaziranga national park is famous for conservation of rhinos then a migratory bird amur falcon it migrates from siberia to northeast india in large flocks this is a raptor bird or the bird of prey so northeast india lies on its migration route to south africa this bird feeds on insects apart from these animals one also finds elephant and pygmy hawk in this region so i want to remember that northeast india is a transition zone between india indo-malayan and indo-chinese region so somewhere the there is affinity with the surrounding region geographic zone is islands so different groups of islands are located in the indian ocean so the ones which are located in the bay of bengal these are the andaman and nicobar islands those located in the arabian sea are the lakshadweep islands so andaman and nicobar islands it is a group of total 348 islands and these are located between 13 degrees 45 minutes north to 60 degrees 45 minutes north latitudes so they stretch for about 590 kilometers from north to south you can see here so it is a group of island islands and it stretches for about 590 kilometers north to south so 
Now it is said to be the extension of Arakan mountain range of Myanmar. Over here, that is Myanmar. So it is an extension of the Arakan mountain range of Myanmar. And in the geological past, these islands were separated from the Myanmar by shallow water bodies and were somewhat connected to the Myanmar. But then they have separated. Andamans are said to have affinity, biogeographically, biogeographic affinity with the Myanmar. Whereas the Nicobar group of islands, they are, they are said to have affinities with the Indo-Asia and Southeast Asia. Tropical rainforests are found in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Nicobar Island is also one of the biodiversity hotspots. We have seen Western Yards was the biodiversity hotspot, the Northeast region, and now also the Nicobar Islands. They are the biodiversity hotspots. That means there is high endemism. And the species composition is also very rich. Now, since they have been isolated from the mainland India for a very long time, and there is no interference of humans, the native species on these islands have been conserved. The disturbance is less compared to the mainland. In the vegetation here, there are tropical rainforests and also one finds mangroves. Mangroves are the plants growing in the coastal areas. They are capable of tolerating high salinity. Then there are evergreen trees, semi-evergreen and deciduous trees. Since these islands are separated from one another, the forests that occurred in these areas are present in isolated patches. And in the evergreen forest, plants like Dipterocarpus, they are dominant or they are found. And deciduous forest, Terminalia is common. Now in this region, about 2,200 plant species are present, which is almost 10% of plant species found in India, out of which 200 are endemic to this region. So essentially the endemism of plants and birds is the characteristic of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now, Nicobar has a low population of mammals, but mostly the birds are more diverse, or the diverse species of birds can be found in this island. So, one finds a mammal known as Nicobar macaque. This is the Nicobar macaque. This animal is found feeding on crabs. Okay, the crabs that are seen on the beach. So it feeds on those crabs. Again, it is a 
black colored maka it is also known as long tailed maka then one also finds nicobar tree shrew so this uh, mammal has bushy tail and a pointed snout it is found in the rainforest restricted to rainforest then the a bird known as nicobar nagapod it is also known as mount building bird it is present in the sandy shores of this area and it is endangered bird which is found in the nicobar islands then other endemic bird species are nicobar pigeon andaman wood pigeon nicobar parakeet apart from bird certain species of amphibians and reptiles are also endemic four species of marine turtles are found in andaman and nicobar leatherback turtle then foxbill turtle green sea turtle and olive ridley turtle salt water crocodiles can also be uh, found in this region then there have been instances where uh, dolphins and whales have also been seen then lakshadweep and minicoy islands these are found in the arabian sea you can see here so this group of islands is the lakshadweep and minicoy the latitudinal extent is between 8 degrees to 13 degrees sorry 8 degrees to 12 degrees and 13 minutes north latitude they spread across 32 kilometers lakshadweep is well known for its coral reefs it they are very very rich in coral populations apart from coral we can find jackfruit almond drumstick growing in this region and the next biogeographic zone or the last biogeographic zone tenth biogeographic zone is the coast india has a long coastline so the coast include diverse type of communities and there are mangroves different varieties of mangroves are present in the estuaries estuary is a area where river meets the sea and the the conditions in the estuary are constantly fluctuating because constantly fresh water is added in this region then lagoons are also present near the coast a lagoon is a body of water 
separated from a larger water body by a natural barrier. Then there are deltas also. Found in this region, delta uh, is a deltas are created by deposition of depositions by a river okay, when it enters the sea. Usually, the deltas are triangular in shape. Then uh, there are sandy beaches okay, which have their own plant communities. Then there are mud flats. Mud flats are coastal wetlands. And they are formed by the silt and the mud that is brought by the sea. Then also one finds coral and rocky coastline. You know, corals are they build, a, build an entire reef. Okay, so huge amounts of calcium carbonate are found. Apart from these, marine angiosperm pastures, okay, that is lands that are used for grazing, can also be found in the coasts. Then remember this animal, dugong, or the sea cow. Is the animal. It is a strictly herbivore animal. It is a mammal and it is herbivore. It feeds on the grass, sea grasses, and it is vulnerable under IUCN status. Then one also finds humpback dolphin in this region. Then you know that on the eastern coast, northern part, Sundarbans are present here. Okay, Sundarbans are the mangrove habitats that are found on the eastern coast. Again, they are diverse in the species composition and Bengal tiger Royal Bengal Tiger is found in the Sundarbans. Eastern coast, particularly the one the area that is there in the state of Odisha, it has many turtle nesting sites. Turtle nesting also occurs on the western coast. Here it is a uh, Famous, Odisha is famous for the total nesting sites. So one finds the turtle known as North Northern River Terrapin. It nests on the eastern coast. In local language, it is known as Batagur Baska in Sundarvans. This is an endangered turtle. It is found on the eastern coast. Then, since the mangroves that are present here, they are habitat or they for particular bird community. Like herons are there, egrets are there, seagulls, sandpiper. These birds can be found in the mangroves of the coast. So let us now revise the last two biogeographic zones that we have seen. Islands, there are two groups of islands, the Andaman and the Nicobar Island in the Bay of Bengal. So here it, ha it has to be the uh, Lakshadweep Island, Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal. 
and Lakshadweep Islands, which are present in the Arabian Sea. Let's note down the correction. Andaman and Nicobar Islands, they are located in the Bay of Bengal. And one finds tropical rainforest in this region. They have affinity with the Myanmar. Uh, Andamans, they have affinity with the biogeography of Myanmar and Nicobar is somewhat related to Indonesia and Southeast Asia. Now, the north to south stretch is about 590 kilometers. Nicobar is one of the biodiversity hotspots. So, this region is high in endemic flora and fauna. Now, since they are isolated from the mainland India and there is less human interference, the native species in this area have been conserved. The Andaman Islands, they are said to be the extension of Arakan mountain range of Myanmar. And the vegetation here includes mangroves. Then evergreen uh, forest semi-evergreen and deciduous forest also. Since these islands are present in isolated patches, one finds a the forest also in isolated patches. <coughs> Excuse me. Then evergreen uh, plants like Dipterocarpus are also present. In deciduous forest, Terminalia is common. And Nicobar, it has around 2,200 plant species. It's about 10% of the plant species found in India. And 200 of them are endemic to this region. Then we have discussed about the uh, Nicobar macaque. It is also known as long-tailed macaque. It feeds on the crabs that are found on the beach. Then uh, we have discussed about the Nicobar megapod. Nicobar megapod is a mount-building bird. It is present in the Sandy shores. It is an endangered bird found in this area. Then, four species of marine turtles are found in Nicobar Leatherback turtle, foxbill turtle, green sea turtle, and olive ridley turtle. One also finds saltwater crocodiles in this region. And also people have spotted dolphins and whales. Then Lakshadweep and Minifor. Lakshadweep and Minifor, these are the islands present in the Arabian Sea. And they spread for about 32 kilometers. They are located between 8 degrees to 12 degrees, 13 minutes north latitude. Lakshadweep are known for their coral reefs. And one also find plants like jackfruit, almond and drumstick that are cultivated here. And the last biogeographic zone was horse. 
Now the coast include diverse group of communities. So there are mangroves which are found in the estuaries. Estuary is a region where estuary is a region where the river meets the sea. So the conditions here are constantly fluctuate because constantly river water is being, being added to the sea. Sea water. When lagoons are present, lagoon is a water body separated from a larger water body by some sort of natural barrier. And river deltas are also seen on the coast. The Sundarban delta is the largest one. Then Mahanadi delta is also there on the eastern coast. So these rivers they form delta. Delta it is usually triangular. Then there are sandy beaches, mudflats. Mudflats are the coastal wet wetlands. They are formed by the silt brought silt and mud that is brought by the sea. Then corals and rocky coastlines are found. There are a few marine angiosperm pastures or the lands that are used for grazing. And you have to remember this animal, dugong. Or the sea cow. It is a herbivore which feeds on the grasses. Then we have discussed about the Sundarbans or the mangroves that are found on the eastern coast, northern part of the eastern coast. Eastern coast is known for its turtle nesting, okay, particularly the part which is present in the state of Odisha. You have to remember a turtle here in this northern river of Terrapin. Locally it is known as Batagu Baska of Sundarbans. It is an endangered species which is found here. on the eastern coast. Then several bird species like herons, egret, seagull, sandpiper, these are also found in the mangroves that are present on the coastal part. So let us look at the uh, 10 biogeographic zones that we have discussed uh, in these lectures. Okay, we have initially discussed the Trans Himalayan zone, okay, which is in the northernmost part of the country. You should remember here animals like snow leopard. Then black milk grain. What kind of vegetation is found? It is sparse alpine steppy vegetation which is found in this area. Then we have discussed Himalayan zone. The Himalayan zone two parts, western Himalayas and the eastern Himalayas. Now on the basis of height, these mountains are further classified as sub mountain, temperate mountain, and alpine zone. Then you should know this animal in the western Himalayas. Angul and the blue sheep. In eastern Himalayas, it includes regions of Arunachal Pradesh and Assam. Again, the same classification is there based on the height, sub mountain, temperate, and the alpine zone. So, one should remember red panda and cerro in this region and the rhododendrons that are found. The vibrant pink color flowers are present on this plant. Then, bamboo that is found in this region. Then Gangetic Plain. Gangetic Plain again it is a plain which stretches from river Yamuna to the coastal plains of Odisha. 
Yes, then you have to remember the Mahua plant. Then the name guy. Indian desert. Indian desert is present on the western part of the country. Spreads across the states of Rajasthan and Gujarat. But remember this Sara Hardwicki and Great Indian Bustard. These are the conspicuous species of desert habitat. Then plants like Acacia, Nilotica, and Zizipus or the bear. Then semi arid zone. Semi arid zone surrounds the desert zone. And if you remember the plant Anogesis and Asiatic plant. Deccan Peninsula. Deccan Peninsula is the largest biogeography zone. And you have to remember this animal gharial. It was found in the Deccan Peninsula. River Chambu is known for this gharial, fish eating crocodile. Then Western Ghats. Western Ghats it spreads across six states. It is one of the six states. It is one of the biodiversity hotspots. And we have to remember the animal diversity here. In the lion tail macaque, it is an endangered species. Then the hornbills are found. And the vegetation is of moist evergreen forest. So one finds Jammu and Terminalia trees in this region. Then the Northeast India. Northeast India is also biodiversity hotspot. Vegetation is varied in this region. Evergreen forests are there, semi evergreen, deciduous forest, few grasslands are there. So you have to remember these animal species Rufus necked hornbill, one horned rhinoceros, and the migratory bird that is Amur falcon. Then we have discussed islands. There are two groups of islands Andaman and Nicobar, and the Lakshadweep islands. So you should remember. The Nicobar macaque and Nicobar megapod. Then vegetation again, there are tropical rainforests in this region. Then the last biogeographic zone is the coast. Coast, one will find this animal, the gong or the sea cow, herbivore. And the vegetation is varied. There are mangroves, few angiosperm pastures are also there. Then Sundarbans, they are well known. Then turtle breeding occurs on the eastern coast. Northern River Terrapin, you should remember this name. So that was all about the biogeographic zones.